Bucks weekly. Bucks are coming off of a 70 to nothing win in the National Trail. Andy, lots of positives in a 70 to nothing win. What were some of the positives you took from the game? The Bucks just really took care of business. They uh, got off to a huge 21 nothing lead right off the bat. They played a sound offense, great defense. Uh, basically dominated the entire time, gave the, the JVs an opportunity to get some playing time. JVs did a great job keeping them off the scoreboard as well. That was a great effort. You know, we, we talked about it going in, playing a one and six football team, so sometimes you have a tendency to relax, and especially that point in the season. But I thought our kids played hard. You know, we, and we got a lot of kids in, which was great. Um, the whole second half we had, had our JVs in on offense and then defense eventually, but, uh, you know, great effort overall. Okay, since this is the last home game, what has this year's senior class meant to you? They've been tremendous. Uh, you know, I can't say enough about them. Um, the leadership factor out of those six have been, you know, it's just, it's been the difference really. Um, you get guys like, uh, you know, our captains and, and any of those guys really could have been, but, um, you know, they just, they've been a, a great group, kind of blue collar and go about your business and, and uh, the kids really respect them and you got to have that out of a senior class. So I just talked to the junior high coaches, Coach Don and Coach Yanks, about their season. They just finished up last Tuesday with a win over Antonia. So let's see what they have to say. Coach Don, and how did the junior high season go this year? It went very well. Um, a lot of community support, a lot of parental support, a lot of coaching support. Um, led to the uh, seventh grade having a Really good season. They uh, they lost one game. They went five and one. They uh, they stepped right out of little bucks with the uh, the fundamentals that they learned down there. Um, Hammer's doing a great job organizing those guys and getting that going. Um, they came up ready to run a double option, and we went right to town. Um, as far as the eighth grade, they played a tough season last year. They had to uh, play up the seventh graders, most of them, to fill out an eighth grade team. So they were uh, doing good at four and four, but this year they came back showing that they had played a lot last year and came right in and took off. And next thing you know, they were seven and one. The seventh and eighth grade worked really well together. Um, Trung by South game, um, it took both teams to win that game. Um, we had kids coming up in the seventh grade. They didn't have a game that week, so they could help the entire time. And uh, we won that game tight. We won Tri-County North tight. Um, Came out last night with Ansonia. Ansonia came in hitting hard with just 14 kids. Uh, gave us a game for a quarter and a half. But they kept reacting well, reacting well, and um, finished it off. Get a co-championship for the league, Arcano. Um, you can't ask for a whole lot more than that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Coach Yanks, how have the high school players and the coaches helped you inspire the kids this year? When Coach Miller came here, he was, all, he was about the team. Everything was team, and our kids really adapted to that well. Starting in Little Bucks with that sixth grade group, um, they were they were team from the beginning. And as they got into seventh grade, and as they started mixing in and practice and games with the eighth graders, all of them, all 35 of them, became one one team. They gelled together real well. We had kids playing in the eighth grade games as seventh graders. They'd come in for a couple plays, give guys breaks, so we could tell them what they needed to improve on during the game. And they just came in and gelled real well together, and that's what led to a good season on both sides. Okay, uh, Coach Don, what are the things that you guys work the most on in practice? Well, they're, they're in junior high, so the primary thing that we work the most on is just their fundamental skills. As they get up to high school, they're going to spend a little less time in practice on fundamental skills. They're not going to necessarily run as many uh, ta form tackling drills and, and spend as long a period of time on that form block drills, they're going to be executing plays and working on fine-tuning things, but down at this level, if we spend more time on that and less time on fundamentals, we're going to have a play we can run, but we won't be able to block and tackle. So the biggest thing that we work on with them is just being able to, one, stay low. That's you, Every year you coach, you learn more and more about how important that is. Fire off the ball. Every year you coach, you learn more and more about how important that is and be able to block and tackle. This year's group got very good at those things, and it led to uh, to very good things happening on the field. And if they, they performed well with their plays, we were able to get a lot into the practice. So uh, as we the year progressed, the plays got a little more complicated, 
but more fine-tuned, and uh, it was fun to watch them. Their double option got very good. Okay. And uh, Coach Yanks, uh, what are some of the other teams in the league that we need to look out for in the future? Well, this year, that as far as seventh grade wise, there was they had good games. They played well in most of all their games as far as who we play in the league. Uh, eighth grade wise, we had a couple, three close games, good games too. Which really showed how tough you have to be to play. I mean, in the CCC and. I think everybody is pretty much going to be tough once you get in high school. You've got four grades there that's got all different kinds of kids, all different kinds of athletes. So once you get into high school, you got to come to play every Friday night. The junior high roster has 35 kids, and I only see two of you here. So uh, can you tell me how you were so successful? We have five coaches. There's myself, there's Coach G, Coach Walters, Coach Mills, and Coach Collins. Um, they're able to, uh, when, they, when, when we're in practice, we're able to take those 35 kids and break them down. When we bring them together as a scrimmage, it's better than a scrimmage would normally be because we have coaches spread out watching certain sections of the scrimmage, offensively and defensively, coaching kids up, pulling kids out, putting kids in at spots, coaching them off the side, putting them back in to where we're not just throwing kids at each other for 15 minutes and calling it practice. But at the end of the day, between all the coaches that we have, we're able to split the job up and make it doable to where we can take the kids to a higher level than we would have if we were just two of us. And to tell you the truth, that's a long season when there's just two of you and you're trying to do that much, especially when you're running two schedules. Okay, uh, how does this year's Ansonian team differ from last year's team? I think they're pretty comparable. Um, you know, you look at them and they're always kind of a, a, a bruising, physical, get after you on offense and defense, you know, especially up front. Um, I think they're, they're bigger, you know, this year, the, uh, the Keller kids, about 200 pounds, um, you know, comparable to Liette, I think very similar uh, with their style and everything else. Okay, uh, what should we expect to see from their offense this week? Well, same thing, bruising. They just, they come at you and they try to get four yards every time they touch the ball, and they're pretty efficient in doing that. So, uh, physical and, and come right at you. That will wrap it up for week eight of Bucks Weekly. This Friday night, it is Ansonia at home. Broadcast time is 7.15. Kickoff is 7.30. Don't forget to get your tickets for the Covington Buck Booster ball drop. That takes place after the game, but you can buy your tickets anytime during the game. A uh, ball lands in a helmet or nearest to your helmet. You take half the pot. For Marty Listener and Andy Johnson, I'm Kyle Moore. We'll see you later. Go Bucks. We don't need that. Step right here. Don't even say it. Marty <laughs> won't fess up to his football skills, but he is a football player. When Marty was 13, he was a water boy helping me out down at the football field with the junior high. Primarily because Marty's mom would let him play football. All right. But Marty got as close to the game as he could, just like he is now. One day he got so close to the game that he grabbed some helmet and shoulder pads and a practice jersey from the kid that it was out for whatever reason sitting on the sidelines and jumped in the scrimmage. And I'm blowing the whistle and I'm working one side and, and he's on defense. So I'm behind the offense, watching offense, calling plays, and I look over and I see this bare leg kid come flying across there without his practice pants on. I'm like, who in the world is that? And I look through the helmet, I see the eyes, and I'm like, Marty! Get that stuff off before your mom comes and finds me. Safe to be said, he did not get hurt. He was perfectly safe, but he did get his couple of plays in before it was over. <laughs>